All right, guys, and we're back with another episode of What the Shell. <laughs> That's right. We got Ed. He's back. Come on uh, now. Ed, man. How's being a father of three going, man? Oh, I, was, I was just wondering when you were going to ask me that. Um, yeah. Hey, straight off the ripper. You know, I'm only here with one. It's man. it's it's um it's like having a couple dozen or another hundred turtles, maybe. Um, <laughs> that you got to keep continually checking on during the night and during the day. And no, it's actually rewarding, man. Um, everything was amazing. Everything um was healthy. Um, it couldn't have actually worked out better. Um, too healthy babies and uh we are happy we are actually just beyond blessed honestly when you when you think of how um um how perfect the delivery and everything was it's almost like you know it, it doesn't seem like a burden as much as you know going into you know having newborns and stuff and being woke and right. less sleep you know it kind of just you know we don't take it for granted man and so um you know even though we have an 18 month old that's running around and screaming and trying to you know, we got to coax her into being gentle because all she wants to do is smother them in the most loving way. Um, right. <laughs> but no, like man. a like baby dolls. Right. That's what yeah. I, at least yeah. that's what I imagine. <laughs> yeah. But no, it's good to be did back. Your, man. Prior prior to the twins being born, did your, was your daughter like a baby doll child? Like I, 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 I almost not say I refuse, but the reason why she has one or two is because they are gifts. <laughs> But if gotcha. it was for me, uh, <laughs> I don't yeah, my, baby dolls. <laughs> my my daughter is is definitely a baby doll child. She has cribs. She has all the stuff. She goes to sleep with them, and I'm like, so now she's at a point where she's drawing pictures of her little sister <laughs> that doesn't exist. <laughs> so yeah, like, unless she knows something that you don't. Uh, I don't know, man. Because I'm like, first <laughs> off, if we have another one, it's gonna be a boy. Okay. So I don't know why you're drawing a little sister, dude. That, dude, that's what I said, and then I I was anticipating too. So careful what you ask for, man. <laughs> did, did twins run in your uh, family? Neither, neither one of us, man. So yeah, oh, man. It's, it's only a godsend because you know well, it can't help it happen any other way. <laughs> hey, that, so. the, the Silverado is gonna be a uh, oh, uh, dude, not, already, not already, man. Hand. We had to upgrade all the um. All the baby, you know, car seats and all that good stuff. So now our, our oldest daughter's riding high in the big girl, a little, you know, bigger yeah. um, car seat. And I think it just dawned on us. Was it this past weekend? Because we had uh, my mom in town. And um, it was mom funny because, yeah, because it was funny because um, we were like, that's, we were going to go somewhere. Um, and then, like, me and her and my wife looked at each other and we're like, we don't have the room in our vehicle. Now, mom, yeah, and I realized the whole back truck. seat would just be car seats. <laughs> yeah, man. I was I, like, "Oh man, no. <laughs> nah, man." I, I'm I'm excited to see the twins grow, man. From even if it's from afar, I'm, I'm yeah, dude. definitely excited. <laughs> well, yeah, they already got their niched. Um, people made them like hand knit, you know, turtles and stuff like that. So people already know, man. So they already getting yeah. art started off right. So it's good to be back. Um, yeah. Sorry, I missed last week. Um, thanks for covering, and um, you know you did good and holding it down to four. That's why you know, teamwork, baby. Yeah, t- teamwork gets the dream work done, Come man. On. Come on now. Hey, I- I'm excited, man. We got we got like a a turtle celebrity, man. This guy is like, I, I don't even know. He's like Brad Pitt of the turtle world. Like, oh man, that's pretty hot, man. That 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 is a I don't, I don't know, man, dude. Uh, you didn't even give that to Jordan or anyone, man. Come on, uh, man, I don't know. Feelings up in here. Then, then when he can, then when what's his name comes on, you're gonna be all blushing and stuff, man. No, nah, I think I think Jordan would be more like um, uh, uh, the Tom Cruise of the Turtle World. Whatever you say, man. Uh, I'm not judging guys, characters. No, nah, no, nah, th- this guy was in a band, like so, run, run the so whole this, zoo from his house. Like it's insane. So, so this is actually the add-on from a previous podcast, correct? If I'm not yeah, mistaken. yeah, man. You so, know, we, yeah. we had to do ladies first. You know, we had his wife on here, Casey, yeah. with, you know, the Terrapin Conservation Initiative. Ooh, hey, that's, hint. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's, a, that's a tongue twister for me. Yeah. I don't know why. I'm a teacher. But uh, oh, that's going to be a good one, man. No, let's go ahead and add him to the stream and, and let's get as much. I mean, you already got sirens and everything going on, man. Hey, what it's a for welcome him. party. Welcome, welcome party. Presidential <laughs> escort. Presidential <laughs> escort. Hey, already, apparently you're the Henry Rollins of turtle keeping. 
<laughs> All right, let's go ahead and add him to the stream. All right, Chris, welcome, man. What's up? What's I, happening? I, I, those sirens were perfect. <laughs> perfect. You know, you know what's funny? You you said before about the band thing. There yeah. was there was one big show years ago that we actually walked out to the sirens going. You know, like the really? light. The lights went out and they, they started, you know, blaring the red lights before the band actually took the stage and they're, 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 you know, the sirens. So that was pretty cool. I mean, granted, my mom was the only one in the crowd, but still. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Dude. Uh, <laughs> let me tell you this. There was a time when I used to throw parties when I was in college, like club parties. Yeah. I, I threw a party uh, in Orlando, Florida. There were seven people. Okay. <laughs> but one of the seven people was Shaq. So no way. I, I swear to God, I have That's pictures awesome. of him and all. But I feel like a winner. I think he like just happened to come by this place to smoke. Yeah. Yeah. And hey, I had Shaq at my party, so that's sick. You guys are starting out with all these banger um, yeah, stories right? and stuff, and I'm, I'm like, I'm sorry, sitting, yeah, I'm, I'm sitting over here. The past two weeks, I'm like running on zero sleep and a lot man, of baby you're, 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 and... you're the you're the big deal here right now. You know, congratulations. You know, uh, yeah, I'm. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> no, no, I couldn't be more grateful. Like I said, man, it's it's right. it's a it's a privilege, and I'm I think um, I'm thankful that I can handle a lot when it comes to you know that's a good thing. You could probably vouch having all these animals and everything that you almost can like get some kind of grasp of like magnitude of yeah. You know, not yeah. saying I'm comparing babies with turtles, but or anything, but it, I mean, it, in essence, it's like okay, when you have a lot of animals, it's kind of like. Okay, we can rile this in somehow, some way, and navigate. It, this. Yeah, it's a life. It's a life that you know you got to take care of, and that, and you get pulled in a million directions. But yeah, you kind of have a. I think you kind of have a sense of how to do it. You know, when you're used to looking after. Yeah. Living living things, you know. I mean, I couldn't even imagine, you know, especially the magnitude of you guys going on. I mean, we we were asking your wife like, how do you do that? <laughs> Good thing you live on the property, but still, you know, you guys got so much going on and it's you know, nuts. Yeah. I'm excited to see your perspective on everything, man. Because honestly, it takes a different kind of someone, man. So not someone with a little bit more than just passion to do <laughs> what you guys uh, Yeah, do. I, I think it's called being diseased, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Come on now. Yeah. <laughs> I I think it's turtle addiction, man. It, it is. It, it's, it, it's weird how it's evolved though. You know what I mean? Like I find myself in later years now, like, you know, like there was a time where I had to have everything. I had to have it all, you know? And, and now I'm like kind of, and now I don't want to say the opposite of that because we, we have a lot of animals here and we always will, you know, but it's, um, I, I guess it's just kind of evolved to in a sense where, um, there's a, there's way more thinking now that goes into it when something is presented to us, you know, uh, as opposed to just five years ago, you know, uh, you know, that short, you know, um, where, you know, we, I guess what I'm trying to say is, you know, we all, we all, all of us, you know, at least I think all of us at one point are, you know, th those, those kids that, that have to have everything, have to have a little bit of everything, you know, going to a reptile show is like Christmas morning and, and, you know, you don't, you don't stop to think about coming home with containers like this. And then you get home and you're like, Oh, I don't, I don't have anything to set this up. You know, <laughs> you know, like that kind of thing, you know? And, and in some cases I, I miss that, you know, I, I miss those, those days that, that like, um, I guess innocence of it, you know, that's yeah. way to put it. You know? I, I got a question for you for the people that might not know, and, and maybe you don't know this number for real. Mm -hmm. um, but can you tell the people a little bit about yourself? And when you end, can you mention if you could estimate how many turtles you guys have? <laughs> I'm curious. Um, so I, uh, I, well, Casey and I started Garden State Tortoise uh, only in 2011. Um, so yeah. it's, you know, it's just gone, you know, next year it'll be 10 years old as an official entity, but I, I had been using the name garden state tortoise as like my screen name on all the different forums and groups and stuff. And I've been doing this nonstop since I was five. So when I'm, you know, five years old, I mean, you know how, like when you look back, like, I don't know how you guys are with your memories, but mine is getting worse and worse. But you know, when I think back to being a kid, there's like certain moments that you know really are the ones that ended up de defining you that are like 
you you still see them like they're happening right in front of you, and then everything else around that is a blur. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like your parents are like, "Oh, remember when?" And you're like, "No," but I remember this turtle. You know, <laughs> and, and that for me was I was five years old and I was playing with GI Joes and and. Um, a sandbox that my dad had made for us and he was mowing the lawn and he clipped a box turtle. He just, just, just grazed it. He didn't really hurt it. He popped off like one of the scoots, you know, the, the white bone was exposed and he brought it over to me. And I, I remember he said here, and I said, what's that? He said, it's a turtle. And I said, what's a turtle? He said, you're, you'll find out. You'll see, you know, cause it was in its shell, you know, and yeah. there I am, I'm playing with my GI Joes, you know, and here's this turtle sitting there in the sand and the next minute it opens up and the head comes out. And whatever happened from that moment on set the stage for everything, you know? Huh. And then, it, so it's been nonstop since then. And, you know, then I, you know, became a teenager and, you know, I was always spending a lot of time in the woods, no matter what. And then, uh, you know, getting interested in girls and then getting interested in music and, and just really going full force with that. I would jump, I would, one minute I would have a pretty cool collection of reptiles, you know, and, and it was always primarily turtles and tortoises, but there was a time when I was messing around with bearded dragons. I was messing around with veiled chameleons, a couple snakes here and there and, um, and leopard geckos. And then, um, you know, it's funny. This is funny how this worked because once I was like, if I was single or really paying attention to music, everything went, that was it. I didn't have anything anymore, like maybe one or two things. Then I would settle down and get comfortable and become myself again. And then I would obtain all these animals again. You know, I'd, I'd save up 20, 30 bucks, run to the store and buy a little green iguana, you know, and, and you know, stuff like that. And then, um, and then that just kind of kept snowballing. And then I would get to these points where I would get really into it, start building this big collection again. And then like, I'd have to go on tour or something and I'd have to pull back or whatever. But then when I met Casey, it was, it was, uh, you know, a lot, uh, several different light, light switches went off when I met her. And one of them was, I don't want to be on the road anymore. I want to be home. This is what I want to do. And I was like, how do you feel about me starting a turtle and tortoise business? And she was like, I think you should do it. And I was like, well, then we should probably get married because you just, because <laughs> you're cool with that, you know? <laughs> and, and, you know, <laughs> and, and, you know and, and then that, that's, that's how it came about. And then I, I never would have imagined where it would, would take us. It's, it's, uh, it's a whirlwind. Um, I got to ask this real quick before yeah. we, we get off this topic. Somebody sent me earlier this week, wanted to know what was the name of your band? I was in a lot of different bands. Um, the band that took me the furthest was a band called the youth ahead. It's a pop punk band from North Jersey. Um, and that is what kind of put me at a, a semi-professional level, if you will, you know, um, and then that branched off to a band called Wicker Hollow, which I'm still in now. Um, and the youth ahead had, had reached a, a pretty big level where, you know, all the bands we listened to, we were playing with, you know, we, we were partying with them, we had funny stories with them, you know, um, some inappropriate and, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. And then, um, you know, we, we, we were like really really there and it just you know we were in the face of all these major labels and stuff like that and then we just we didn't get signed and that just broke everybody's heart and then we lost one of our key members he was done after that point and we couldn't be the youth ahead anymore without him so then that's when we started branching off from there and um so now now with what's nice is music is the hobby you know music is is my outlet it's my hobby if something's really getting to me i can write a song about it and get it out you know mm -hmm. And the turtle and tortoise thing is my life. It's my career. It's, it's what pays the bills. It's, you know, what uh, is probably shortening my life at the same time. That's so, crazy. The flip side of that, man. Yeah. Like, cause but, you can have two things that you're passionate about and yeah. you know, one that you're able to do, you know, full time, another one to have your outlet, you know, they flipped, like <laughs> you know, that's what <laughs> it was. Cool. At one time music was, was my, was supposed to be my career, you know? And uh, you know, and, and then it flipped, it flipped to uh, just for kind of, you know, this, this is what, what it is now. And uh, to answer the question about how many animals we think we have, turtles and tortoises, that's a tough one because it changes. You know, right now it's hatching season. So there's thousands here right now. <laughs> you know? Okay. Uh, oh, it's okay. I'll yeah. You know, we just, we just, Let, you know. Let's say hatching season's over. You, know, <clears throat> you sell or you give them away or whatever you do with your hatchling. <clears throat> you go yeah. into winter or, or whenever is like your dry period. What, what is like your standing collection? I think it's, I'm actually, sometimes I'm embarrassed. I don't actually know this. 
but I, I think it's around 400, 450. Is that you including know, like uh, rescues and stuff or? No, um, cause the rescues don't always stay, you know, like, like I'm always trying to move the red eared sliders out. And a lot of people come to me saying, Hey, I'll take some red ears. And, and I, I'm hesitant with that because you know, what's going to happen. They're going to think they can take them. And then they, I end up with them again, you know? Yeah. So, um, but I appreciate it. I, I appreciate the fact that people want to help with them. Um, but if I were to include all the red eared sliders and, and yellow bellied sliders and stuff, dude, I, I mean, 600 at any given time, you know? Wow. And it's like, you know, a red-eared slider is still a turtle. I, I, I don't yeah. care that it's the most common thing on the planet. You can't look at a red-eared slider and say that's not a beautiful animal. And if right. you think about it, can you imagine if they were actually rare with the way that they look with yeah. the green and the black and the yellow and the red? Forget it. You, you, you know, but that's yeah. just not the case. No, it's, it's funny you said that because I watched your video on red-eared sliders, uh, mm -hmm. your rescue video, and I watched Greg uh, with Greg's Turtle Haven's video on red-eared sliders. And I gotta admit, like I grew up with red ear sliders. It really like built my appreciation for them. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm in Florida, so we can't really have red ear sliders unless you have a permit. Right. But I mean, like, it's like, man, I might get some yellow belly sliders. I mean, yellow bellies are great, man. I'm, not, I'm attracted to black and yellow animals, so like they're right up my alley, you know? <laughs> right, right. Um, so how did I have a question? Because you were talking about, you know, let's. You almost like jumped right ahead to. Uh, did you have a vision as far as when you were talking about doing like starting like a turtle and tortoise business? Like, yeah, you know, um, it's one of those things where usually you kind of grab your gradually and then it, eventually it's like, oh, well, I'm doing it anyway. Let's just take it more serious. So you just like went full on and was like, yeah, we're going to do this. You know what it was? It, it was um, any time in the past. Uh, if I had been in a bind, if, if things weren't going well, it, it was the turtles that always got me out of it, you know, and I'm not talking just financially, I'm talking mentally too, you know, you, you know, even, even now when, when everything is really fast paced and there's never nothing not going on, you know what I mean? Like there's always something crazy happening here. Um, it's, uh, they, 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 they bring me back in, they, they, they slow you down, you know, especially when, when you have a moment to spend a little time with your favorite species, you know, and, and you, re and it brings you back to, you remember why you're doing it, you know? So the vision that I had, you know, when, when Casey and I were first talking about really making this a, a thing, you know, uh, for here, from here on out was I didn't, and I, I want to be careful how I say this because I'm not, I don't, I'm not insulting anybody. I, I don't judge anybody but I didn't want to just be a dealer. You know what I mean? I didn't want to be a guy that was getting, you know, borrowing turtles from Paul to pay Peter with them. You know what I mean? Or, or to, you know, I, I wanted to be able to get to a level where everything that was coming that was leaving my hands. I was the first thing that they saw Casey or I, or the girls were the first thing that, that it saw when it left the egg, you know, and I wanted to be able to stand behind that animal and, and I'm able to, you know, so that was that and but that's also what brought on a lot of challenges, you know, because it was like, okay, we, we need loans to start this up. We need property. We need this. We need that. Um, so it's not a matter of, you know, the beauty of some of these dealers is, you know, they can just have like basically holding areas for these animals that don't have that. Yeah, they have to be clean and they have to offer the, you know, uh, the, uh, the basics that the animals need to stay alive and, and be comfortable. But I didn't want to do that. I didn't, I didn't want to just be a holding area for these animals. I wanted to know these animals. And it still amazes Casey. Casey's really good with the terrapins, like, cause she's gotten to know the terrapins of the area. Even the wild ones is what I mean. But she could take one of our animals here, whether it's a box turtle or a Herman's tortoise, and she could go across the yard with it and hold it up and I'll know who it is, you know? So that, that's like, and that's to me, that, that that's one of the goals that I've reached. I know every single animal not just by looking at it. I know it on a personal level. You know, I could say to you, you know, mm -hmm. if I were to take you guys around the wood turtle pen, I could say that female over there is not going to come over to us, but that one is, or that male, you know, like mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. So my vision was to be like a, an, an actual breeder and, and facility where I knew my animals, they weren't just a number. Um, and that I, and like I said, like I could stand behind them, you know, and again, I, that's not, that's just what I wanted to do. And some people think I'm crazy for it because you know what? I, I would probably save a lot of money if I didn't do it this way, you yeah. know? Um, but I, I just wanted to, and that, and like, it's funny, like I would get defensive at times. Like if somebody said like, oh yeah, oh, Leone's a dealer. I'd be like, no, I'm not, no, I'm not, you know? 
you know, it, of course you're, you're making deals with people. So to an yeah. extent you're, you're a dealer, you know, but I didn't want, you know, you know, guys know how it is. Some of these exotic animal breeders, especially in the reptile community, unfortunately get a bad rap because of the way they're doing things, you know? And, it's, yeah. and then it sucks for everybody else because the good gets punished with the bad, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's pretty <laughs> evident <laughs> nowadays. <Yeah>. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, that's pretty cool. That, that vision, just because I think that's what separates you. And, you know, that's what maybe a lot of people, um, they're, I don't want to say they're afraid to pave their own path and pioneer their own way because, you know, so many people have already, they're just doing, you know, going with the flow instead of right. separating themselves and their true passion, the way they want to do it. I mean, that's kind of like what gravitates people to certain people, whether it's relationship wise, you know, and, you know, and not just for what you can get out of it, you know, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, and everyone can benefit, you know, from knowledge and experience. My question also was, you, you know, did you already have, obviously um a, a good group already from all the years that you've kind of had that were already like breeder ready because you just don't you yeah. know, start out with breeding especially with tortoises and stuff i mean you had it for a while at Some, that point yeah you... the one the one thing that that i still to this day regret you know and, and it's because of the music days too you know th these this actually goes hand in hand with what we we're just talking about i've never ever been afraid of taking chances with anything, you know? Uh, and that drove my parents crazy when I was younger. Now, now they're like prouder than ever and everything, but you know, it, I've just never been afraid. Like, you know, I don't, I don't want to go to college. I want to get in a van and I want to go tour the country. Okay. That didn't work out. Um, I don't want to go to college still. And I don't want to go learn how to be a veterinarian or anything. I, I know I can do this. I want to do this. And, and I think that that's the biggest thing is that it doesn't matter that it's me. Anybody can do it. It's, it's the fact that you have to be willing to just put it, put it all out on the line. And obviously having a, you know, a significant other that is, you know, your train with you, you know, like, you know, she, she's yeah. a full steam locomotive, you know, when it comes to this stuff. So it, that helps, you know what I mean? Like you're not, you're not constantly fighting with somebody to get them to understand, Hey, this can work if you just let me go with it, you know? Yeah. So, um, so because of that, you know, because of the music days and because I was taking chances and stuff, I, I got rid of a lot of animals that I wish I never did. I still think about some, of them, you know, yeah. um, you know, and, uh, but yeah, there were certain ones that I held on to certain ones I still had that were like living in my parents' backyard and the old pens that we had. Uh, and then from there, I just really, really built and I started building, you know, legitimate relationships with people overseas and stuff. Cause I wanted to, you know, especially with like the Mediterranean tortoises, I wanted to have stuff that was not related to any of the American stuff because of what the American trade was doing to them and mixing everything up and not knowing what the hell is this. I mean, still to this day, if I, if I go on my email right now, there's somebody saying, Hey, I bought this at Fred's pet center in New York in 1990. And he sold it to me as a blah, blah, blah tortoise. But I think it might, it, there's, that's still going on, you know, cause there were so many mix ups. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I did have to build things from there on out, but then the relationships that we started to create brought other animals to the table too, you know, um, yeah. which was, you know, obviously very beneficial to, for us and the animals, you know, because there were certain groups of animals that we took on early on that nobody really cared about. And now they're a big deal, you know? Do you have like an example of a, of a species or an animal? I'm curious. That wasn't a, wasn't a big deal. You mean? Yeah. yeah that's now like a big deal. Uh, I mean, I, 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 if Anthony was listening right now, he'd be like, oh my God, shut up about the Herman's tortoises because that's like all I ever talk about. But right. the, the Herman's tortoise thing became bigger than I, I could have ever imagined. And all I was trying to do was just kind of, the Herman's tortoise thing was supposed to be my, what was left of it just being a hobby. And I just wanted to share with people what I discovered about them, what I knew about them, the people that I was networking with uh, on them and stuff. And then it just became this, like there was a time when nobody even knew what a Western Herman's tortoise was. They thought they were all just Herman's tortoises. And I, from, from again, another childhood star story that we can tell later, sparked my interest in them. And once I was able to broadcast that, you know, people were like, oh my God, what, what is this thing? Like, look at that, you know? Uh, so that, that's one example, you know, but then, you know, some animals, unfortunately, which I'm sure you guys notice are fads, you know? What one year, you know, somebody's like willing to give one of their children for a pair of Florida box turtles. And then the next year they're like, Hey, can I get my kid back? And like a thousand dollars. Cause I don't want these turtles anymore. You know, it, it, <laughs> right. it's, and that, that to me is agonizing. It's like, 
you know, it's like the red eared slider thing, you know. But it happens uh, so much because most people don't know what they're getting into before they get it. They just think about the enjoy well, I don't want to say enjoyment, but you know, the short, animal in and of short itself. Term satisfaction. Yeah, though. man. Yeah. And, right. yeah. And watching you know, this little baby swim around in an aquarium, <laughs> not realizing it's gonna be, you know, or however big of a turtle you get, you know. Yeah, and, and keep it in the same thing problem. that you got it in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's a problem because you know, you try to educate people too, like, hey, you know, you don't it doesn't have to be a red-eared slider. Yeah, red eared slider is gonna get big. So if you don't have like a huge tub or a baby pool or a pond to put in for it, it's gonna end up with people like me, you know, like don't don't do that, you know. Oh, well, yeah, but it's only five bucks, you know, and that's and then the money thing comes into play. It's like somebody that doesn't want to pay. $650 for a baby Egyptian tortoise, which will probably never end up in an unwanted situation, No, you know, but they don't want to pay that, but they got no problem paying X amount of thousand dollars for a flat screen TV, you know? Yeah. Right. So well, well, I think a like, big thing is, you know, like you said, it, it's investment. Like, you know, I can almost like translate it into health and fitness. Like people don't want to invest in themselves, but they want the short term satisfaction, but that what's, that's what they get out of it. Rather than if you invest good money in something, you know, you're like, well, if I spend this on that, I'm going to make sure I spend it, you know, make sure I have everything it needs, yeah. like to the mm-hmm. utmost, because that's a big investment, you know, rather than for sure five, 10 bucks and get a 10 gallon and maybe, maybe a filter if you're lucky, you know, kind of thing. Well, that's the problem. <laughs> yeah. And that's the problem is, you know, easy dump. <laughs> yeah. People, people can consider a lot of different species. It's not just ready or just throwaway pets. And that's what that's what hurts all of us. You know what I mean? Musk turtles are common throwaway pets, man. Yeah, yeah. I love musk turtles. I don't know why. Dude, you, you would, the, the amount of banged up diamondbacks we we come across is ridiculous. Just just really? the other day, you know, one of one of our our buddies uh, that owns a zoo was down here because he does animal control for the state, and he came down with two terrapins. One great condition. The person did a fantastic job on it. The other one, I don't even know. I I don't know. It's you know. I got nothing to say about it. <laughs> hey, I, I'm yeah. curious since you jumped into the Diamondback uh, arena, and I'm not going to stay there long, Ed. I, I promise. Yeah, go right ahead. Do you keep yours or the ones you've rescued? Do you keep them in brackish or fresh? Brackish, but what I actually do is um, so I'll set them up in brackish, and then it kind of dissipates because. So here, here's the weird part about them: when they're inside for the winter, these some of these confiscations yeah. um, or rescues, whatever. Uh, like those ones the other day weren't a confiscation; they were just rescues that were just surrendered. Um, they're they're in the they're in the exterior building and they're in brackish water with with a good high powered filter. You know they have basking areas and that's it. I have never been able to get diamondback terrapins, whether they were wild or captive bred, to do well in an outdoor pond. Mm, I don't know I'm, what it is. I'm, I'm you know, struggling with it, bro. They leave the water. They leave the water, they go on land, they dig into something and, and you got to constantly keep tabs on them. They start coming down with fungus and stuff from stress. And there's a million details that we could go on about that. You know, I'm sure people listening are like, oh, well, have you tried this or tried that? But so what I'm doing now is I'm keeping them in spacious tubs outdoors so that they're at least getting the sunlight. So what I'll do is I'll mix the brackish water for them. And then the rain comes, you, you get like really heavy rain that washes yeah. it out, you know? And it, I think it's actually kind of cool because to an extent it's tidal and it, 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 you know, the salinity drops, they eat more, they drink more. The salinity comes back up when I mix it again. So I kind of play around with it, but I'm not religious about it. You know, let, um, let me ask you this question. So, so I have a freshwater pond that I keep some terrapins in mm-hmm. and same thing you mentioned, bro. Like I have a million live plants in there. There's no way this water is dirty, mm-hmm. but like inevitably one of them will have fungus and then, I get them fixed up in the next one. And then I also have a tub that's brackish water that gets rain and you don't have to change it. Yeah. How, how, what are you using to make your brackish water? Are you a instant um, ocean? You're an instant ocean guy. Yeah. I, I, but that's just what I've always done. I, I don't know, you know, um, what, what other people are using. Is there, is there a better so, alternative? Some people say, uh, like a uh, pool filter salt. Okay. Some people, some people say instant ocean. I've used pool filter salt. I haven't had any problems, but I gotta admit, I've been really interested in trying instant ocean. Stuff is expensive. That's the only problem. <laughs> exactly, like, man. And when you're doing an outside pond, I mean, yeah. how big are your stock tanks that you're talking about? Uh, I'm using. Uh, what is this? I always forget the size. They're not the three hundreds, and they're not the one hundred. I, I guess one fifty. Is it a one fifty? It's like the lighter gray. Is it? What brand is it? I, I probably. 
Yeah, it's the 150 probably. It's the 150, yeah. So I use a bunch of those. Um, and uh, That's salt. That's like, what, $60 for 50 gallons worth or something? Yeah, like man. You, you walk into Petco. I mean, obviously, you walk into Petco. They're, oh, like, dude. charging you $5 <laughs> for a hello now, you know? <laughs> And literally, you know, and they're like, do you want a dollar? Do you want to donate to pets in need? And I'm like, yes. You know, <laughs> now, it's, now, it's, now it's $62, you know? Um, but, uh, yeah, man, you walk in there to buy that salt and you're like, all right, dinner or salt. Yes. I got to get the salt, you know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so. Wish sandwich tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause I think, you know, the post salt counter that we use is what, 20 bucks a bag or something like that. Maybe. I don't know. What'd you say, Ed? I didn't hear yeah, you. Pool software, what is that? Like twenty bucks a bag or something like that. You, you pay twenty bucks a bag. I pay five bucks. Bro. Twenty bucks. Yeah. What kind of salt are you using, man? Are you getting it from Seven <laughs> Eleven. High quality. <laughs> Mine is five bucks from from uh, Home Depot, man. Five bucks, man. I don't but know you're not having any get. problems though, so why change it, right? Yeah, but I mean, so. All right, this, is, this might sound crazy, but I, I really like – kind of like you, you you try to provide as natural as possible, and I feel like right. instant ocean is a lot more natural than pool filter rock salt. Sure. Yeah. Like there's a lot more minerals and things. And so if there's an opportunity to make it as natural as possible, that's always the direction I'm going to go. You know, I don't have a lot of acreage where I can have amazing ponds, but I'm going to try to do what I can, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Right. So that's the only reason I've been debating it. Hmm. Hmm. Um, you know, we've even thought about too was was because, since we live right on the marsh, was trying to pump the brackish water out of the marsh. You know, we're just we just need the tools to do it. You know, we got to get you know. Yeah. And it's funny the Marine Mammal Stranding Center that we do a lot of work with. They um, that's what they do for the seals and and stuff that they hmm. uh, and they'll 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 rehab sea turtles and stuff and terrapins. Sometimes they'll hold them. And uh, that's what they do. They pump. They're right on the, the marsh too. And but they're like literally on the marsh. Like we live. You got to walk a ways, like way back into the woods to actually hit the marsh, or drive down the road to hit it. So it's not a matter of just running a hose from like my building out to the marsh. That that yeah, yeah you'd have to do some serious serious plumage, get in the pipes and everything. Yeah. And then and then what would you do? Like run an outflow back in? Like try to keep it. I guess. And you know, you know, the other problem with me is I, I am not very aquatic savvy when it comes to aquatic okay. turtles. And like, like I always like envy these guys that have these amazing, you know um, you know, like tub uh, or bin um, systems, you know, where it's yeah. like one button, everything drains. Let me clean it all out. One button, everything fills back up. You know, I, I, I talk to me about box turtles and tortoises and I, I can, you know what I mean? But when it comes yeah. to aquatics, I'm like, okay, tub filter. Tub filter, tub filter. You know? Yeah, I'm the same way. I have individual Indoor. filters for everything, man. It's yeah, just... I wish I, I wish I had. And it's not that I wouldn't be able to figure it out. I figured out plenty of things, but I, I, I just, I guess I just, I'm intimidated by it. And I just don't have the patience to really want to learn. You know? <laughs> no, that's that's awesome. So, so just starting out, when you first started, what, how did it? How long did it take you to actually, to actually get pretty um, um, consistent? Like as far as being able to do it full time. Cause I know you said you want to do it, but like how long did it actually take you? I, what's funny was, you know, so garden state tortoise became an actual LLC and entity in, in uh, 2011. But prior to that, I was like really uh, active on forums and stuff. Um, and you know, like there was no Instagram yet and Facebook was like, eh, you know, yeah. but I was, you know, really active on these popular forums and stuff like that. So I started writing my own care sheets. I started making these, these terrible YouTube videos. When I look back at them, I'm like, oh my God, that's horrible. Listen to me. You know, I'm like, this is a Herman's tortoise, you know? And, uh, but that started generating interest. So anytime I had babies, they were gone, you know, that was it. And so once I started the business, you know, we, we took out loans. So obviously we had like a little bit of a nest egg to get us by and, we weren't married yet. We didn't own a house yet. So, you know, we, uh, and it's funny, like you look back to those days and, and you remember like complaining about money and making your bills and, and then you fast forward to now and you're like, man, that was a piece of cake back then. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but, uh, so I would say, I'm sure I got, it's, it's such a blur, man. I think it was 2015 when it was like, boom, you know, 
it, things were like really consistent. And of course there's lulls. There's, there's still, yeah. you know, that, that's just life. None of us are, you know, yeah. actual celebrities with millions and millions of dollars, you know? So it, there, there's, it's a normal life in that sense where there's ups and downs and you got to pinch your pennies sometimes. And other times you're feeling rich when you actually aren't, you know, but, uh, you know, it, it, in 2015 is when things really, it just seemed to be coming from all different, um, avenues. And then that's when we, uh, I don't know, I don't know if you guys ever saw it now. Um, the, the twins, the, the, t- the tortoise twins that we had hatched and we separated with, um, dental floss. No, I viral. never saw that. No. That went viral in 2015, like insanely viral. It, oh. it was, and it was just a stupid YouTube video. We accidentally hatched twins, which had been done before. I mean, it was rare, but it had been done before. And I made this little instructional video on YouTube about uh, separating them with dental floss. And then the next minute, Fox News wants to come over. CNN wants to come yeah. over. Discovery, <laughs> like, like everything. And we're like, wait, what's happening? You know, who so all that, did you let come over? Uh, we let Fox. Uh, I think it was only Fox. We, we let Fox come and then we went to them and then, um, they just all started doing their own coverage, like without even asking us, like B, uh, BBC took it, discovery took it, CNN took it, Yahoo news took it. Uh, God, so many. Now other. we know how you got so big. So, right. so they all, they all, <laughs> they all took this story about the, the tortoise twins. And, um, so that started putting us out of just the uh, like American bracket, you know, like, like I, I, I've always had friends in the reptile community since I was like, God, I don't know, 14, you know? And, um, so that just started like broadcasting us to a different, uh, venue. And, uh, and that didn't, th- that wasn't necessarily for like sales, but it just started, you know, the, the Instagram accounts started growing, the, the Facebook accounts started growing. And then I started becoming more, um, social media savvy. And it's funny, like I hate social media. I I despise it, but I need it, and I've gotten really good at it. The only thing I can't get a handle on is that stupid TikTok. I I yeah, I, I want to. If I could hit TikTok, talk, I I can't TikTok. I can't TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And uh, so that, and I'm trying to get a handle on that, but every time I do it, I'm like, I feel I feel like an eight year old trying to, you know. Dude, don't like, even talk to me about that. What, what, what are you gonna do? Like a little dance with the turtle? <laughs> it's, like, it's funny, dude. Like, I have people telling me like, you got to get in, you got to link your TikTok to your YouTube channel. It's going to make all your videos go viral. And my cousin was here the other day and she's in college and she was telling me about it. And I'm, and I'm, she's like explaining it. And I, I must've been looking at her like this the whole time, you know, but, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, the TikTok, it's like, man. I guess that's what my like, wife was talking about before we left to go to the hospital. She was like, we got to do this baby mama dance. I'm like, Oh my God. <laughs> she was like, and she couldn't even figure it out. I'm like, what are we yeah. doing here? And then she just hit it. And yeah, the rest is, you know, if that goes viral, then, you know, I'll take that for what it's worth. But right. no, nah, dude, yeah, that's the one, man. <laughs> and, 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 but you know, that was actually my, my, a little bit of a, um, a hiccup that I caused myself was that YouTube video went viral and I never jumped on the YouTube thing. I never did until recently. So that happened in 2015 and then my interest was taken away from youtube because of all the other things that started happening the organizations we were working with the animals that we were we were getting our hands on the zoos the this the that and then i started getting very savvy with instagram and facebook and then <laughs> I suck at <TikTok. laughs> and uh and then um oh what the hell was i gonna say but so i i kind of abandoned youtube and that was the dumbest thing i could have done because if I stuck with YouTube from that moment, because the twin, the, the tortoise twins video has 2.9 million views. So yeah, if you could have been like camp Kenan level, man, or yeah, if, if I had, and it's funny, I, I, Kenan has been here to film a couple times and, and I've told him that I'm like, I, if I had jumped on that, but I never thought at the time, nobody really cared about YouTube, you know? Right. And it wasn't, and it wasn't even like my YouTube channel was growing exponentially or anything. It was, all these other things were happening because YouTube wasn't that popular yet. So I wasn't, that was part of the reason why I wasn't paying attention to it so much. Mm. So then, you know, fast forward all these years now and, and now I'm, I'm, I'm getting back into the YouTube thing and, and I'm liking it. it. It's a lot of fun. Um, but it's, uh, it's tough. It's tough to try to, that's, that's the one platform that I'm doing okay in, but I, I wish I was doing as good as I'm doing, uh, on like Instagram with it, you know? Yeah. I was going to ask you, um, 
you you kind of hit on it a little bit as far as you know when you're hitting the full time, but then were you already doing other um, um, with your terrapins and all the other stuff while you before you hit the full time? No, or it was after full time, and then you started getting a little bit more branching out and doing a little bit more. There was actually a time I want to say because again the, the business actually started in 2011, so I it was either. I, I think it was 2012 where I was starting to get a little concerned and, you know, scared. And I actually went back to doing construction and I was working with a, a high school buddy of mine uh, for, for like the better part of that year. And then things started to pick up financially for us. And I was like, okay, I don't need this anymore. And I left and I, I stuck with garden state tortoise, but right around, uh, right around then, you know, somewhere in the, in that vicinity uh, is when the turtle room came into play. And what year are we talking about now? Because that was the question I was going to ask. Oh God, I, I, I think it was, I think it was 2012 or 2013. That you joined. joined. Yeah, because it's funny. Like I started talking to to Stephen Anthony through the uh, the old uh, Turtle Forum, Austin's Turtle Page. Yeah, and uh, and you know hit it off with those guys, and then uh, then they asked me to be. Uh, a partner, an educational partner of the Turtle Room, where we would feature feature each other on our websites, blah blah. And then the Turtle Room started to grow, and you know I stuck with them; they stuck with me. Uh, and then you know when when Steve was starting to really make positions for people as the organization was growing, they asked me if if I would be the director director of animal husbandry. So that um, so that that's all part of like how things started to snowball, and it was kind of like a domino effect. And then, like I said, once we got up to 2015, like it just like all the pieces started to come into play. And what was one of the biggest things for me that that I still cherish greatly and always will is, and I'm sure you guys know, like you know, when you when you have a, a reptile business or a reptile hobby, and you're in the hobby of breeding and selling and and uh, and, and just enjoying these animals in captivity responsibly, it's hard to get respect from some of the organizations. But I guess the way I was carrying myself, the way I was doing things, it started opening doors, you know, um, with, with the TSA for one, uh, the zoos that we work with, New Jersey Fish and Wildlife, U.S. Fish and Wildlife. And that was all like a – that was really surreal for me, you know, because yeah, – I got to admit, man, if, if you wouldn't have told me, I would have thought you had a degree in like wildlife biology, man. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's it, – that's people have said that to me before, but, um, and then I usually make a stupid joke to embarrass myself and they're like, Oh, okay. But, uh, <laughs> it, all of those things coming together kind of like made, um, I don't want to say slogan or motto because there is no, we don't use like a slogan or motto. The only thing we really go by for garden state tortoises, you know, the conservation and preservation of turtles and tortoises is because I always have, I still do and always will believe that, you can't just have one side that doesn't work. That never will work. If you're only involved in conservation and you think you're saving turtles, you're not. If you're only in the hobby and you think you're saving turtles and you don't care about conservation, you're not saving them. All the sides have to come together and there's no reason why it shouldn't. We all love the, all love these animals. Yeah. Every one of us, right. does, yeah. you know, and yeah, there, there's little, nitty gritty things that, that have to come into play. And I get that there's politics with everything. We're never going to get away from that. But yeah. the fact that I could walk this line where I was, I was careful enough to, um, I guess, show the benefits of each side to the other side, you know, just yeah. Yeah, has really, has really worked. And I would love to see more of that happen, but you know, it, it's, it's not necessarily anybody's fault either. You know, it, it's, there, there's a lot of outdated ways of thinking, we live in a time where these animal rights slacktivists think that they are even relevant. You know, somehow they've made themselves relevant and that's hurting all of us. That's even, even if you're a strictly a conservation <laughs> facility, th those people are hurting from the animal rights people too, you know? Yeah. So it's crazy. Um, you think they're doing as much good as they think they're, even though, you know, you can argue all you want, but yeah. honestly, I mean, if you're, if say in your instance, I mean, if, if you didn't do what you do, I mean, your your wife uh, shared the numbers of <laughs> the numbers in and of itself of how many hatchling and you know release. I mean, not to say the population's like hurting, but given the fact of that not being established in the population, all those terrapin. I mean, come on now, you know, 
you know, do you think not doing anything is doing a benefit either? You know what I'm saying? Like every, every single one of we those. We got to do our part. I mean, yeah. Dude, it's heartbreaking, man. Like, and, and for all the ones that we, we got and we hatch, it's disgusting. What doesn't make it. it, it's ridiculous, you know, and the age old tale of leave them alone. That doesn't work, you know, because when you do leave them alone, everything's eating them because yeah. we've already made our mark. We pushed all of these predators into this one little space and they're yeah. all smart. They've all learned hey, this is a buffet. And when yeah. it's not eggs, it's the babies. I'm good. You know, I'm going to stay right here. You know, yeah. but there are the raccoons on this road. They come out during the day. That's how bold they are. They don't have anything <laughs> wrong with them. They're not rabid. You know, they come out because they know at any given time they've got a meal. So, yeah. you know, it, it's, but you know, one of the things that, that that's really uh, positive is New Jersey Fish and Wildlife. They're a, they're, a, they're a wildlife, fish and wildlife agency that almost every other state should learn from because they don't just go, nope, can't have them, blanket effect. That's not what they do. You know, they say, look, you want to have these? Okay. Prove to us how you got them. That, you know, they, they make you jump through a couple hoops, which should be the case because then you end up having the bad ruining it for the good. And, uh, and, 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 you know, they're, they're eager and open to work with people that are knowledgeable. You know, Casey gets asked questions all the time by wildlife officials. She's not a wildlife official, but they're asking her questions, you know, yeah. and same thing here. Same thing with me. You know, um, there's been times where certain agencies have, have brought us animals that they didn't even know what they were. They had no clue what they were. You know, can you yeah. tell us what this is? You know, so but the, the point is, 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 you know, if, if everybody could just, put their differences aside and, and shut up for a minute and actually look at the big picture and how all, all pieces of the puzzle need to fit together. We would actually have a shot at this, you know, I, yeah. I'm going to be the guy that says this and there might be some mad people, but I hope Florida takes some uh, steps from New Jersey. Cause like, I don't know if you saw the, the new meeting they're going to have about diamondback Terrapins. It's no, like, what's up with that? So yeah. you currently the rule is, you know, you're allowed two per uh, person per household, but that okay. also includes you're allowed to take two. Okay. Uh, I don't personally have any wild caught terrapins and mm -hmm. Ed doesn't either. Um, but I'm not opposed to getting permits and jumping through hoops. My, okay. bigger, my biggest concern, honestly, is what are the qualifications or what would the qualifications be for a permit? Like I, I'm, an, I'm a teacher, but I don't work mm -hmm. at a university. I'm okay. not a wildlife biologist. But does that mean that I'm not qualified to take care of my captive bred animals that have all come from out of state? You know, is that how Florida looks at it, though? Like, do, do they um, because in New Jersey, they just want they just want to know that you've got the indoor space, the outdoor space. You've got a veterinarian lined up if there's an issue and, you know, you get inspected. So, you know, they're, right. they're going to come out and check on your enclosure and say, hey, that wood turtle can get out right there. No, you can't have them until you fix that because they don't, right. you know, granted, you know, I've, I found a three-toed box turtle walking down the road the first year we moved into this house. You know, we're way out of the three-toed box turtle range, way out of it. Somebody yeah. lost it, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. and yeah, granted, maybe they just ditched it, but what they're trying to, up here, at least what they're trying to do is they're making sure like, okay, look, if we let you keep these things, they better not be getting out. You right. Know? Yeah. And Especially down here, you got the disaster and all that stuff. Yeah. You got to really definitely make sure, you know, Whenever you submit any of the permits, I mean, you got to have that disaster, right. you know, Gabe kind of. And and I don't want to think that I don't want you to think that I'm bashing like Florida Fish and Wildlife because, I mean, obviously five of the seven subspecies of Diamondback Terrapins are native to Florida. So, I mean, right. we're, we're taking a huge hit when people illegally poach them, you know, mortalities, habitat destruction. But I just think I guess I'm more so worried about how quick the. Um, like the big snake bands, the tegus, the iguanas, like it was you're just much, you're worried about the whole blanket thing that he was just referring to. I mean, just like right. what happened one what on one, the, tegu, the, yeah, sat, that just go over yeah. overturn also, you know. So what is the uh, what is the meeting? Do you know what the meeting entails? Like what the purpose of it is? Because the re the reason I'm asking is the Diamondback issue, if there is one, whatever whatever they're getting at seems to be like on the complete opposite end of the spectrum than the big snake band or the tegu band because the problem with the big snakes and the tegus is, is that they survive down there right so that they're, they're able to do you know the damage that they're claiming that they're doing so what is, what is the issue with diamondbacks then so i think it's more so uh and, and again i'm no wildlife biologist so anybody has you know don't don't bash me i'm assuming it's more so due to like 
the lowering population. So, for example, like the mangrove terrapins down in the Keys are, mm -hmm. are being straight hammered by poachers. You know, okay. the, the ornates for sure. Like those are two of the subspecies that I'm more interested in. Obviously. I think they're just getting a lot more traction as far as I don't I don't know I don't want to say popularity, but I mean they're they're a gorgeous animal. You know, and I think maybe the mindset is you know we want to make sure that they're preserved and taken care of, you know, to the utmost. And, you know, especially cause you know, you got a wide range of them down here, you know? So I think that probably has something to, mostly to do with it, you know, I'd imagine, but I just, you know, hopefully, you know, they, they hear, I mean, people actually um, voice, you know, what needs to be said as far as, you know, the flip sides of the conservation and the, the hobby and, you know, the appreciation, you know, because I've, I've taken mine to do educational programs when I do book yeah. readings and stuff like that, that those things could be hindered, you know, not being able to, you know, and there's some things you just can't learn from a book, man. Like, no, you yeah. I, hey, you don't get to tell me. <laughs> I'm, I'm huge into, into education. And that's what Casey and I do too. You know, with the whole pandemic this year, we couldn't really do, um, you know, uh, many of these educational talks, but they're about to start up again. But, um, you know, that's what we love to do. We, lo we love to take, you know, these, these different animals to uh, uh, educational, you know, j just the other day, my, my best friend from high school, he is, he has an irrational fear of snakes. Well, Casey yeah. kept pressing him and pressing him and he, she got him to actually pet one of our king snakes, you know, <laughs> that, was a, that was a big deal, you know? And so, yeah, the hands-on thing, but somebody, I just saw somebody comment with, with the Asian pet, pet trade um, and that, that definitely that's hands down the, the diamondback terrapins and, and the way that they just end up in, in there in droves is insane. But the thing that kills me is it's very similar to like spotted turtles too. You've, you've captive bred animals or even original founder wild caught animals that were collected at a time when it was legal and now, and they're established now. And they're, or even if they're at their end of their life cycle and they're still producing, you know, there's, that's probably where Florida's concern comes in too, is like, there's no reason to keep taking these things because, you know, granted, maybe not all seven subspecies of the diamondback terrapin, but at least the Northerns and the Carolinas. And I mean, the ornates, people are breeding them without any problem whatsoever. Right. So yeah, there's a price tag on some of them, but it's just like spotted turtles. And I said that in one of the spotted turtle videos that I just made, there's no reason to take one of these out of the wild. There's yeah. so many of like, them. You can and, buy them in bulk. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's like, yeah. and then, you know, oh, I'm too old. I'm not going to raise a spotted turtle. Well then, you know, that tough luck, bro. You started too late then. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's, th that's, that's, I think where their concern comes, but I disagree when any agency just does a blanket effect. That's the problem right. because that's where we lose more animals in the end because you don't have the right people doing anything with them. You know, yeah. I'm gonna send you the uh, the information just so you can read about it. I know you're in New Jersey and all, but no, I, I would love to. I, I've actually been asked to come down uh, to Florida. Um, they did something about box turtles not too long ago, and I was actually asked to uh, to come down and be part of the meeting. And I was interested in it, but then I never got any information to follow up on it. And then before I knew it, it had passed. But uh, but yeah, I, I would definitely be interested in reading it. You know, I'll let Casey read it too. Um, sure. Hey, so, do, you, do you mind real quick, Ed, if I share? There were some yeah. comments that people uh, posted about your YouTube videos and things. Okay. Uh, let's see. We got Evan says. Loving the concern. <laughs> Thank you, man. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> uh, we got, I'm not sure this person's name, but they're on YouTube. Great. <laughs> Chris should go visit Kenan and do a video. He will get more. That's true. I, I should go down there and, and visit him because he's come up to visit me so many times. <laughs> and then we, for got, that two we got this one. <laughs> I, I, Greg's channel is way better than mine, so everybody should just go to his. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see what else we had. I'm going to share this because I believe there's some truth to this long comment, so this might take you a second to read. I just – I just feel like the community is very antisocial when it comes to networking amongst all groups. Seems like many think they know everything or will only interact if money is involved. A lot try to share knowledge as well, but majority to me seem to be antisocial or disinterested in helping new hobbyists. That's true. That's that's really true, and that's unfortunate, you know. And you know what? Um, I, you guys probably can relate. You know, I came from a time where all I wanted to do was get. 10 minutes of, you know, one of the guys or women that I looked up to that were doing this for a long time before me, you know, yeah, and right. it's true, like sometimes you had to buy something 
to get <laughs> that, you know, that kind of yeah. like relationship with them. And, uh, you know, there, there are definitely people from my past that like, that I can't even get in touch with anymore. I don't even know if they're alive anymore. One of them moved out of the country and moved back to Germany. And I would love to just pick that guy's brain for, for an hour or so with a beer, you know, if that was ever even possible. And it's true. It's like, and, and don't get me wrong. Like I cannot get to my comments. I cannot get to all the different messages on the social media platforms, especially Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. You know, it's just impossible. So what I try to do is I try to make content to answer some of these questions. And I even, one of the most recent uh, videos I did for my journal series on YouTube was answering some questions and I'm going to keep doing that. I'm going to, and I'm glad I thought of it again, maybe this week I'll do another video where I compile three or four of like the most common questions that I'm getting and I answer them because it is, it's tough to be one-on-one -on -one with someone, you know, when you, when you're raising two kids, you, you still have to have a, a time with your wife, you know, and it, and it can't always be animal related. I, I'm, I'm at fault for that all the time, you know? Right. Um, <laughs> And time for our hobbies, you know, my, my, my yeah. music is my hobby now, you know, and you obviously the only way I'm going to keep providing healthy animals for people is if I'm on top of them 24 seven, which yeah. I'm lucky <laughs> enough to be with them. But I mean, just minutes before I was on here, I was turning electric fences on and checking ponds and, and whatever, you know, so it's tough to, to sometimes give people that, that one-on-one. -on -one and, um, uh, but I, I totally understand where that person is coming from is, is it's like, you know, especially now in this social media craze you know you've got these facebook groups that are actually cults they're all drinking the same kool-aid you know and, and they don't care you know, they're, the OJ, they're like you'll get out you know <laughs> it's like but, but, I, but, I, but it's juice you know yeah. and, hey, it's hey, i got i got kicked out of a facebook group because i shared a picture of an enclosure i'd set up to be naturalistic and it had sand as a substrate Oh, the sand debacle. Mm. Yeah, it straight up got kicked out of it. Oh, my God, man. Don't get me started on the sand thing. I've actually gotten nasty with a couple people about sand, you know? I'm like... That is a naturalistic substrate, folks. Just don't go take a moist piece of Missouri and throw it in the sand and then say, here, eat that. That's right. going to be a problem, you know? Yeah, right. Gosh, uh, we're so social, but we're so disengaged and anti like it just you, yeah. you know everyone wants to live in their own bubble man and you know that's that's the one thing that why we need more more more, more people like you and <laughs> anti sand anti cult sand yeah. <laughs> you guys do a whole episode on, on the anti sand cult you so know? why why um i, I wanted wondered why tortoises does that special place in your heart yes it does man yeah. uh <laughs> um I'm known for my stories and some people tell me to shut up about it and then other people like them. So if Come you hate on. this, I'm sorry. Uh, so going back, okay, so five years old, got the box turtle, right? So everything from then on, it was box turtles and painted turtles. And, and did, then, you, did you restore, did you help that one box turtle that needed help? Did you go straight back well, on it? Here, well, what we did was we, we were those people back then, okay? We didn't know anything about them. My dad came from Italy. So what, what he did was he drilled a hole in the marginal scoot and we te we tethered it with a fishing line and it would often snap the fishing line and disappear and i would cry and then we'd find it again because we knew that turtle because it had we had he had skimmed it with the lawnmower and popped the scoot off so the bone was exposed you know yeah and we lived we lived in uh in a central jersey town where the houses are all right up against each other so he was prob he or she was probably one of the only box turtles even in that area anymore um so that's what we did. We didn't know any better. You know, we, we, we really didn't, we just, but at least we were keeping the thing outside in the yard, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and we would feed it fruits and stuff. And, and then, uh, and then one day it snapped that line and got away, but, and it probably got hit by a car because they were just developing and developing and developing at the time, or maybe somebody else picked it up. So for the next X amount, for the next four years, next four years, it was every summer I would climb up the fence and look over and try to see if there were any box turtles right there. And every one, like maybe once or twice a summer, I'd get lucky and there'd be one back there. But at that point we were getting smart. We were building pens. My dad would have like a big vegetable garden and we'd put the box turtle in there and the thing would have the life because it was a huge <laughs> vegetable garden. It would destroy his tomato plants, you know? And, um, and then, uh, you know, I, my grandfather would take me fishing and I would catch painted turtles. Um, but as a kid, anything that was baby was the coolest thing. Isn't it funny how now you want the adults, yeah. you know, the, 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 now you need the adults. You need to build the breeding group. You got to have a 2.94, you know, like these female greedy people, you know? And, uh, 
you know? And then, uh, but back then it was like, if you went down to the lake with your buddies and you caught a baby musk turtle, dude, like everybody wanted you to be the man. Yeah. They're <laughs> like, yo, Leone's got a baby musk turtle. These schmucks over here have adults, you know? <laughs> so, so that it was all that. And then like for holidays and stuff, I would beg my parents for ready or sliders because they were the coolest thing in the world to me back then, you know? Yeah. So I you know, would get ready ears. They would go to the pet stores in New York and they would get me ready ears. And my dad would, would, would get furious about having to clean the tank in my room, but we always had big elaborate tanks for them. You know, he would make these big cascading rock things for them. And then my grandmother, uh, they lived in, uh, they lived up in Jersey city and Weehawken at the time. They they're now down here. My Italian grandmother, who is going to come into play in a minute for why tortoises, she used to rescue diamondbacks from the Hoboken fish markets. Oh, so okay. I, awesome. I would come up there to see them on a weekend and she would have just a classic black shell, black diamond on the head, female, always females, because those were the ones that they could eat, you know, even though they weren't yeah. supposed to be doing it. And we would bring that home and set it up in the tank with the red ears and uh, they would get fungus and stuff. But we didn't know why, you know, now we know why. And then in 1991, I was nine. My grandma, my grandfather, my dad's dad passed away. And, uh, my grandmother went back to Italy for the whole summer. She just wanted to go back there to where they were from. You know, she was distraught, the whole thing. And she came home that September and, or whatever month it was. I don't remember. And uh, I remember it was the first day of school uh, that year. We, I was at the bus stop with uh, my buddies or whatever. And uh, after school, my parents drove us up there and she brought us all these different um, souvenirs from Italy you know, I'm like, cool. Thanks for the sweater, grandma, you know? And then at the very end, her and my dad are standing in front of the window in the front of the kitchen. And my dad goes, come here. And I'm like, what? He goes, come here, look. And my grandmother's holding this clear plastic box with a turtle in it. But I thought it was fake. I thought it was porcelain. And, <laughs> and I'm looking at it and I'm like, oh, thanks grandma. And my dad goes, that's it. And then I looked at it and it moved its head. And then I, that's it. I lost it. I flipped out. <laughs> and that was my first tortoise. She brought back a baby Western Herman's tortoise that my uncle hatched in his garden there wow. from the adults because everybody over there keeps tortoises. It's normal. And uh, they, 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 my uncle Sergio gave my grandmother, he said, Take, give, bring this back for Christopher, you know. So she brought it back. And then that, that, that was it, man. It was like, what is this? Why is it so cool? What do you mean it doesn't eat worms? What do you mean it doesn't need water? You know, well, <laughs> need water. And uh, so we kept it for that year. And my dad would buy me all these turtle books so we could try to figure out what it was. And we finally figured it out that it was a Herman's tortoise. But we didn't know at the time that it was rare, that it was the Western, you know. And we kept it for, you know, we didn't keep it right. We kept it in like a 10-gallon tank. And then that summer, we put it outside with the box turtles. And it got sick, you know, probably caught something from the box turtles. And, and it died. And then from that moment on, I just, it was tortoises. It was, and it was mainly Herman's tortoises. And I just did everything I could to get back into them. Hmm. Yeah, I was going to ask you how you actually, you know, how you, because, you know, social media and, you know, internet wasn't as big as a thing. Now, you know, you can find anything. So you kind of just learned as you went in some books. Those and were the, like that. You're right. It was books. And it was, <laughs> those were the times when I wish people would have given me the time of day, you know? Yeah. And I would call, you know, once, once, you know, when you're trying to like boot up onto the internet and it takes like 90 minutes and you're finally on and you're like kingsnake.com, you know, and it, that <laughs> takes another 25 minutes to load. And then you see one guy in Florida that has Herman's tortoises. So you message him, but he wants you to buy something from him. And I'm like, but I'm, but I'm a kid. I, I, I got this Jurassic Park toy, you know, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> those are gold. You don't want hey, to give those. Hey, I, I, I gotta ask this question, man. What? Did you uh, ever get any more animals back from your uncle? No, that was the one and only time. Actually, it almost happened a second time. <clears throat> a couple years later, my sister actually went with my grandmother back to Italy. For she stayed there an entire summer, okay. from June to September, and they did have one for me. And a friggin' bird the day before they got to go to the airport came and took off with it. Oh, dude. Yeah. So I was like. <laughs> Oh, you know, and so hey, that I was got, like, you know, I gotta post this because this is funny. <laughs> uh, yes, and that's not the first time somebody said that. That's right. <laughs> Grandma was a turtle smuggler, but mind you, that was 1991, and that was back when it wasn't that big of a deal. And you could bring 
a baby turtle on the plane and they didn't think you were trying to blow the plane up with it. You know, it, it's so. funny to say that because uh, I remember my mom telling me a story. She used to live in Italy for a short period of time, oh, nice. and uh, she brought a red ear slider back from Italy to the United <laughs> States. Really? <laughs> <laughs> of all places, she brings that back. A red ear slider, man. <laughs> and, and it could have been reversed. It could have been red ear from the United States to Italy. Yeah. She'll, probably, she'll probably comment in a second if she's still oh, watching. Oh, that's awesome. But she, wow. she smuggled a red ear slider on the plane, man. That is the best oh, yeah. thing I've ever heard. <laughs> I'm like, so what, go ahead, Ed. I was going to say, so what, um, as far as moving forward, man, because I think we asked, you know, your wife about, you know, long-term kind of goals and, you know, and all that kind of stuff, especially when you got, I know you got so much stuff going on. Is there anything that, you know, bucket list things that you still want to do or, uh, you know, and just things like that, or even want to achieve, even whether it's something, you know, not just, you know, financially, but actually just something that um make an impact, you know? Yeah. I, uh, I mean, my, my dream is to, like I was saying, like to just see, just see a day when, when there's, there's way less politics with reptile people or turtle people and, and see the different sides come together and hold hands a little bit more, or at least high five each other, you know? Uh, you know, and it's, you know, it's kind of (laughs) like to compare it to present times, it's kind of like the different sides have been wearing masks, you know what I mean? Like, don't breathe on me, you know? And, uh, I would love to see that, you know, that's something that's going to take more than just me, you know, fighting for it. But I, uh, one, one of the things that we need to do that Casey keeps saying, we're going to, we're going to wait till, uh, <laughs> I love Ken. Um, we're going to wait till, uh, Ken's actually, he, he's, he's one of my mentors. He's one of the guys that did give me the time of day. So love you, man. Um, we, Casey's been saying once the girls get older, we, we need to get to Europe and we need to do like a, a we obviously want to see the sites over there and experience the culture, but we have to do some serious Mediterranean tortoise research. Like, like really, because I've become this like go-to for, for all different types of European tortoise species. And, you know, yeah, I, uh, I definitely know what I'm talking about, like with, with it, but I, I really want to get into the field and just do some of my own extensive you know, research, photography, videography, like just, just nuts over there, but it's going to take a long trip, which means it's going to take a long time away from our animals. So it's got to be, it's kind of a, a double-edged sword with that because the time of year that we would go has to be the time of year over there when the tortoises are active, but it's also going to be bleeding into when our animals are active here. You know, yeah. it's easy for us to go away in the winter because, you know, three quarters of our collection are, is asleep. You know, even the snakes that we keep, I can brumate, you know? Yeah. Um, but there's still a significant amount of animals that are awake, but to go away in the summer, it's like, you know, it's very hard for us to do that. Um, Especially when it's your livelihood. <laughs> yeah. So that, yeah. So that's one of the things um, we would, we would like to branch our conservation efforts out. You know um, there's a couple things in the works that I, I'm not going to mention right now, just cause I don't want to jinx anything or upset anybody, but uh, th- we want to branch that out with um, we're, we're huge ad- advocates for New Jersey wildlife. We, I mean, we we love Florida. We we come down to Florida all the time. You know, we can't live without Disney World or Florida in general. But it's hard to beat New Jersey's wildlife, especially its turtles. You know, yeah. And uh, and it, I always hear you mention the weather. Like in the summer is very similar, right? It's funny, Ken. When one of the times that Ken was up here filming, he was sweating, and I'm like, and I made a joke, and I said, "Dude, you're from Florida." He goes, "It's hotter here." And I said, "You're kidding me." He said, "It is hotter here," and it's I guess it's just a different kind of heat. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny, you know, we were uh, going back to Florida and going to Dis- Disney. We were in Disney. Um, we, we try to go twice a year. And we were there uh, September 2018. And uh, it was like no difference, man. It, it was relentless. It, it was like 105 here and 105 down by you guys. And then it was oh. 105 when we got back here. You know, so, you know it was no like, break. Uh, yeah, no break. <laughs> so, yeah, it's uh, – it, it gets, it gets real hot here and then it can get real cold here too. You know? Yeah. It's like, you know, bursts. <laughs> yeah. That's but, the crazy thing is that if I'm, you know, myself, you know, it's like, you know, most people that, you know, are into the hobby, you know, I say they don't have a, <laughs> they, they don't have a degree, <laughs> but you know, you also don't need, you know, you don't always need one either, you know, um, to learn hard knocks like me, you know, I, I do got one, but you know, that's why I'm really more on the, I'm, I'm, I'm on both sides because I've, I've got the knowledge, I've got the education for a, more of a conservation mindset, but then also, you know, 
you know, it's it's my it's my release when I'm yeah. at home. You know, I got my own hobby. You know, and yeah. it's kind of what keeps my you know filter. You know, you know, yeah, clean and, sure. you know, an appreciation for it, you know, because sometimes, man, you can have all the conservation and all this outlook, but like, there's just something about having your own animals, man, that you just can't get a, that kind of appreciation. You can't beat that kind of appreciation, especially when you. Yeah, you're and you know what? The, the, and I've I've said this since day one, and. You know, I mean, I'm going to push my girls to, to go to college, you know, because I, yeah. you know, I don't know, you know what I mean? They, they may not get as fortunate as I am with, with, with what I tr have tried to do, you know, but uh, hands on, man, hands on learning. Yeah. You got to be hands on. There's nothing like experiencing, you know, and, and it's funny, like I've been on surveys and stuff where I, observed my own animals before I went on the survey. And then when I was on the survey, I, I had a much more successful one. You know, you, you learn things about, and that's again, going back to joining the sides, there are things that we are learning from these animals by experiencing them on a daily basis that these poor researchers that only get a week in the field out of the year, yeah. don't even had, had no idea that it even existed, you know, yeah. and we're time. all there. We're, we're barely scratched the surface with knowing anything about turtles and tortoises. And that's why I always say, I know the, the technical definition of an expert doesn't coincide with this, but I feel that there's no such thing as an expert in this field, you yeah. know, because like, the animal is not, not like, you, like you know? said, you know, especially down here, there's such a lack of um, a revenue that comes in to be able to actually do some of the research. But yeah. you know, even when they, you maybe do get a chance to do the research, it's not as um, fruitful as they had hoped. Maybe yeah. because of that aspect where, you know, if you had that aspect, you know, when you go into the field, you'd be a little bit more, you know, prepared and, you know, just a little, you know, flip side, like you said, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. I totally see that. I would yeah. love to, that's, that's something I would love. I would love to see more funding for. Oh, for dude. Yeah. Hands really down. Man, and, and just that. Turtles, you know, it's, you know, you know, some of these animals, you know, and, and I, I love all animals, you know, I, I love sharks, but you know, there's a lot of money in shark research, you know, there's a lot of money in, in, in polar bear research and, and pandas and, and uh, you know, can go on and on and on. Yeah. And it's, it's a shame that turtles are one of the most endangered vertebrates on the planet. And they're kind of getting the short end of the stick with that, you know? Yeah. So I think it's because they seem expendable. Like hmm. you go to the beach, you're like, Oh man, I got to worry about a shark being in here. When do you ever hear somebody like, Oh man, I wonder if there's a sea turtle swimming by me, you know, like, and, and sure. sea turtles and, and, and tortoises and, you know, the other type of turtles, you know, they have different conservation things. But, you know, overall, like you said, people, polar bears, why are polar bears so? Well, it's hard to see a polar bear. It's not hard to see a turtle. Like, yeah, I guarantee you anybody in the U.S. at some point can go 10, 20 miles from their house and they'll find some species of turtle somewhere. Yeah. You know, so even like Jordan said, you know, sea turtles are just like so. That's like that. It's pretty sad when the first when the first thing you type in turtle on Google, and that's all you see. Turtle, you don't see. Yeah. I mean, you have to be so specific to even get whatever species. And it's like, man, there's so many. I mean, I can't tell you how many times like, you know, you can post something, and you know, and especially people I know locally, you know, and my friends in my in my network, and they're like, I've never even seen anything like that before. You know, and you're talking about yeah. you know all white, you know, ornate diamondback, and it's like. Man, dude, like, <laughs> so yeah, people have no way. it's funny, you know, we, uh, our neighbors the other night, you know, they, they had, they had some of their friends over and they asked if they could just come give them a quick tour around the property, you know, and we're close with our neighbors, you know, they help us out and we go away and vice versa. And, uh, you know, the two people that they brought here, they, they knew sea turtles and they knew Galapagos tortoises because they had been to the Galapagos and kudos to them. Actually, they got to see lonesome George in the flesh before, right before he died. But, um, anyway, that's what they were familiar with. And they're walking around and they're, they're looking, they're seeing radiated tortoises. They're seeing marginated tortoises, diamondbacks. And they're like, what, what is this? We had no idea that this existed. And growing up, you know, on discovery and stuff, it was always sea turtles. Even in Archie Carr, I was a big fan of our, I still am a huge fan of, of Archie Carr, but right any, down the road from there. Yeah. The only thing that made it to television was his sea turtle research. But then if you got one of his books, you could be like, this guy's talking about box turtles. This is great. You yeah. know? Yeah. So it's, and it, you know, that that's the way it is though. It's, it's the megafauna. It's the familiar animals that are, you know, you're never not going to see lions on TV. They're not going to talk about the pancake tortoises that are all sandwiched inside those rocky outcrops that the lions are sleeping on though. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and that to me is more interesting. I love lions, but I mean, there's a flat shelled tortoise that can expand <laughs> its body. 
And you're not going to cover that? Dude. Hey, I, I have to share this now that you brought up pancake tortoises. So in my local like Facebook reptile group, mm-hmm. uh, somebody just shared that they got a pancake tortoise from um, Florida Fish and Wildlife, basically. Uh, it was living under somebody's um, lawn mower that people thought it was a gopher tortoise. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, man. Just Holy got a, cow. Just got a pancake tortoise for the free. They thought it was a gopher. Wow. And, I can't tell you. There, there has got to be so many pancake tortoises in different states that are uh, walking around, at least in warm areas, because they those things can climb. Like it's it's unbelievable. I mean, North American yeah. wood turtles can climb, snapping turtles can climb, but I mean, it's incredible what what pancakes can do. I mean, they just, they just go straight up, right on a rock, you know. Really? You got to really cap those enclosures off, but that that's, that's amazing. <laughs> that's cool. good thing they didn't turn the lawnmower on. Right, I'm like, man, wow. I wish I wish I could get a pancake tortoise that way. <laughs> <laughs> so, how did yeah. you? Um, is it just as far as you know your establishment? It was was your establishment and what you were doing um, on that magnitude is what attracted like you the magnitude of U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services and stuff to you. Or like, I how did the, how did all that come into play? Or when you started to do more research? I, I, I think it was, uh, you know what? I, I don't actually know the definitive answer to that. I, I think New Jersey Fish and Wildlife had a lot to do with it because I, from a young age, you know, I was still living at my parents' house when I first figured out like, oh boy, I need, I need permits. Um, I was just always transparent, you know, and uh, making sure I, I always had like what I had on my permit. And if I didn't, I'd be like, okay, this, this can't be here, you know, that type of thing. Um, so I, I think maybe one thing led to another where maybe they, like maybe U S fish and wildlife came to them of, Hey, we, we have to place these turtles. And they said something, um, there's definitely been stuff that's come through the turtle room. Um, you know, again, with the zoos that we work with and stuff, I'm also, uh, I mean, this is more recent, so I guess that doesn't really have much to do with that, but I'm a, I'm a member of New Jersey fish and wildlife's venomous, uh, venomous snake response team. Yeah, so okay. I, I guess it was. I don't, I don't really, nobody's actually ever said to me, Hey, this is why we, we would like you to help us. Or this is why we. You were just, you you were just involved. I mean, essentially. I guess, right? I guess so. Yeah. I mean, I, I did a lot of talks, you know, I was, I was flying out places and speaking, you know, uh, and um, I would like to do more of that stuff, you know, um, so, so and just kind of. What brought on the uh, venomous? I love snakes. I love snakes. A lot of people did not know that about me. Um, and it's funny. It's like recently I've, I've left a lot of Facebook groups uh, just because I can't keep up. It's no offense to anybody. I just, just can't keep up, you know? Um, and I don't want to start coming off like rude. So I, I, I remember I, I had joined one like colubrid group and, and somebody was like, ah, who was it? Somebody was like, wait a minute, is that really you? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, snakes and i was like well yeah i i love all reptiles i love all animals you know <laughs> but yeah i'm, I'm, I'm you know i, I love i love snakes especially colubrids and uh, again i i have a sick obsession with new jersey native wildlife and, and reptiles and, and you know if i grew up in florida it would probably be florida if i grew up That's in california me, bro. yeah you know like it's it's nostalgic it's your childhood and i just i love everything that occurs in this state except raccoons but uh <laughs> but um John Bergman, who runs uh, one of the zoos, he owns the zoo, one of the zoos that we do all the rescues from. Actually, that rescue video of, of the sliders and everything that came in, that those were all from him. He uh, he mentioned to me like two years ago, he was like, uh, oh, you should join the Venomous team. And I was like, but what? You know? And uh, so he put a good word into uh, New Jersey Fish and Wildlife about me doing that. And then I went through training that May and joined the team. And uh, I have yet to be called for a rattlesnake. It still hasn't happened. <laughs> everything else, I, everything I've gotten called for is like a black racer or something. And you have to tell the person, no, it's not going to kill you. you know? <laughs> is that but, the only uh, venomous snake you have up there? No, we, have, uh, we, we also have copperheads, but they're only in the northern uh, half of the state or northern sector of the state. You know, down here, it's uh, only the timbers, and they're extremely rare. They're like really, really rare. In fact, the only time I've ever seen a living timber rattler was in pennsylvania on my bachelor party it wasn't even in new jersey um and uh we we have a lot of snakes a lot of amazing snakes but yeah they're those are the only two venomous i mean if you want to count 
the ring neck and the hog nose because you know, the hog nose has the rear fangs, but no, they're not listed as venomous, you know? Mm. Yeah. So. That's the same thing, man. When I went to school, I went down, so I come on, I'm from Ohio originally. And mm -hmm. most people, you know, we got them copperheads down to Appalachians, you know? Yeah. And, and then the timbers also, cause of all the coal mines and stuff like that. Right. But, oh, nice. but yeah, dude, that, I'd love to get, actually get on some kind of, you know, venomous thing eventually too. Cause like, it's, even when <laughs> the, the, for me with the snake thing, again, like I love snakes. I keep snakes, you know, uh, on and off. And I, I've just like in, in recent years gotten really back into them. But uh, I think it's like the, one of the most irrational fears. So I, I, I love that I can be part of, of a team of people where it's like it's not – the object of the game is to not just get that snake. You're, it's, it's a three-part thing. You want to get the snake out of harm's way because a lot of these people are ready to kill them. You want to get the person out of harm's way, you know, like, like we, we had a, a call with it, with a little girl and her dog, you know, like, and she stuck her face down. She, she's lucky she didn't get tagged yeah. because she was curious. She didn't know what was going on. Yeah. Uh, what and kind then, of snake was it? It was a timber. It was, oh, a, but we, by the time we got there, it was gone. Okay. But, um, and then, and it actually had clipped the dog, but like nothing went in. The dog went to the hospital and came right home. Uh, and then the third part of it is to try to educate them if they'll, if they'll, talk to you, you know? Uh, and like, you know, I had a call for a black racer that was stuck in uh, bird netting a couple weeks ago. And um, the woman was very, very clear that she's like, I don't like snakes, you know, uh, but she goes, I would never want one harmed. And, and I, that's why I had to call you guys because I feel terrible for this little thing. And the snake did not make it, you know, but it was cool that she was like, look, I don't like them, but yeah. I would never want to hurt one. And, and I would, I would never run one over or, you know, but you know, you don't always get that. You get people that are yeah. that just uh, I'm gonna kill the thing if you don't get yeah, here. Yeah, like, and they freak out. And that's why I was in college. You know, I had, luckily, you know, when when you have a aspect of you know you know animal you know lovers, I guess you could say, or snake lovers. You know, when you get those random people that actually enjoy like love snakes, my buddies was that ran up you know in a dorm room one time and you know called me and he was like, "There's a snake and um." In a parking lot, well, it ended up being I rigged up a quick snake hook, you know, from a clothes hanger, and, and there's a little copperhead. You know, yeah. all these, you know, people are screaming, you know, you know, why are you keeping that thing alive? And I ran, I, I mean, I walked halfway up that mountain top just to even, you know, get it back up there. But, you know, it's yeah. just one of those things where it's like no appreciation, you know, because, you know, someone could actually really got hurt because, you know, A, they didn't know what it was, you know, and B, yeah, you of course. Know, just, yeah. so it just, yeah, it's one of those things where, I, I mean, I have a, Tender heart, you know, coming from Ohio, there's a, you know, I, I don't know, man. Like, dude, the venomous are just, they're beautiful animals. They're always the most beautiful. Like, I mean, when I was doing educational programs up there, we had a timber. This thing was, it, it was a, it was, it was a hog. I mean, it was fed. Well. The one I trained on, yeah, the one hog. I trained on, she was like, you know, our, our, I, you know, I don't want to go too far into snakes, but, but, uh, we were, you know, you have to, we have to, two, we have to use two four foot hooks. That's the regulation to, to move them. And uh, she was like, you know, he may not look that big, but wait till you get him. And dude, when you get him on those two hooks, you're like, I need yeah. to lift or something. Like, like this thing is heavy, you know. They're a thick body snake, you know. Yeah. But gorgeous, man. I'm going to look into that. <laughs> I, I'm afraid of snakes, so. Sorry? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, the whole time he's like, "What are these two going to shut?" I'm up? actually really thinking. Oh man, I appreciate him over there, man. Yeah. I really, think I hear crickets out there. Yeah. There. <laughs> nah, man. I, I do want to. I do want to get rid of that fear of snakes. I, I think I'm more at a point now than you know ever before. I mm -hmm. mean, I'm. I'm not gonna lie, man. I was that person. If I saw a snake, the only good snake was a dead snake. Right. I mean, I'll take it back to as far as when I dug my uh, stock tank pond. Um, I'm pretty sure it was a coral or a king snake. Uh -huh. Who knows? But I mean, it's a dead snake now. And mm -hmm. now, lo looking back, I'm like, dang, man! Like, even if it was a coral snake, the likelihood that myself or my daughter or my dog would have gotten bit by a snake this big is yeah. like very unlikely, you know? Right. And well, so, no, I think it's just now that your daughter won't let you kill it because she like she loves snakes. Oh, now, my so. daughter loves snakes. We she went to the National Breeders Expo in Daytona. Yeah. And she spent the entire time trying to trying to hold the big snakes and touch the snakes. <laughs> yeah, that's that's one thing. My like my my one year old, you know, we're, we don't know what she's going to be into yet, but she's already fearless. But uh, but our three and a half year old man, she is 
yeah. snakes, turtles, lizards, dinosaurs. But she does it all while she's dressed like a princess. You know, <laughs> it's, it's same with my daughter. <laughs> yeah, it's unbelievable. She's no fear. You know. No That's man, awesome. I, I appreciate it, bro. It's it's definitely been a great. Uh, podcast, man. I definitely learned a lot. I, I'm going to go ahead and say, man, I got to admit when I first messaged you, I didn't expect you to respond. <laughs> really? Oh, wow. <laughs> no, man. I didn't. I didn't, man. But you know, I'm, I'm very thankful you did. Well, thank you guys. I, I, I really appreciate it. Really. This this was fun. It's it's always good to talk to uh, uh, just good dudes, you know, people that can uh, hold a good conversation and have fun. You know, I was just telling that we, I just met one of our one of our turtle room interns for the first time, you know, he came down and we had interns. a blast. Oh you know? man, y'all are fancy now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I you know, afterwards he was like, you know, thank you so much. And I texted him. I said, no, thank you for, for being normal. You know, it's, yeah. it's, you know, how it is sometimes with, with animal people. It's like, you know, <laughs> hello, you know, but, uh, but yeah, that's great. Did he get yeah. your coffee? <laughs> <laughs> well, we let him release some terrapins. Yeah. Uh, hey man. Go get me a bag in Missouri. <laughs> I think uh, uh, like me and Cody talked about, we got to get both of you guys on a tag team and be the first duel, you know, you and your wife on. And oh, that would be awesome. awesome. I think that'd be a cool outlook. I mean, you want to you you make people laugh. Yeah. We've had it both on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that'd be I awesome. Th- I got to ask this question before it ends. I'm sure. curious, what is your actual role with Turtle Room? Um, because I got to admit, the turtle room has been something that I've been curious. How could somebody like Ed or I in Florida, you know, get involved with you guys if there was anything you needed, you know, supplies, volunteers, knowledge? I don't know. And not that I have knowledge to give you guys, but. Um, hey, we're all, everybody's learning, man. I, I learn every day, every single day. So I'm sure that I was talking to you about salt. That's something I, you know, I didn't even know that pool, pool salt was a thing. Yeah. You know? And I wasn't going to go try to enter some Diamondback Facebook page where I can't bring my OJ, you know, <laughs> but uh, no offense. But uh, what was I going to say? My role at the Turtle Room is, you know, I'm the director of animal husbandry, but the difference between us and some of the other organizations with animal man- management uh, roles, uh, we don't have an actual designated Turtle Room facility where a collection is kept. So my job is to kind of oversee uh, the different members and and their animals that are turtle room projects. So let's say this guy lives over here in whatever state, you know, uh, pick a state, Kentucky, you know, and they keep this tortoise, you know, and it is designated, it is a turtle room project. My role is to help the animal man- management team come up with, uh, you know, uh, protocols for the animals, standards that have to be followed, stipend, you know, uh, which I've been dragging my feet with because we've been so busy this summer. But um, that's something that we really are going to start climbing with. But um, so that's where, like, you know, I don't report to a building every single day and have people working under me where I'm, you know, okay, these guys have to be fed today, or, you know, we're looking at a chalkboard with things being checked off. Yeah. So, you know, uh, a lot of it right now is writing things up and making sure everybody's on the same page because if, uh, let, let's say, a certain group of animals being kept by a turtle, remember, are going to be eligible for a stipend where they're going to receive uh, funds to purchase food and supplies for the animals. They have to be meeting the standards that I'm setting for them. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, let's say you've got a, 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 I don't know, an Aldabra tortoise and you're trying to keep it in a waterland tub. You know, I, I have to say that, 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 that's not the standard, you know, that, that ain't going to last long, bro. You know? Yeah. So, you know, like, you have to tell Kevin that. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> yeah. No, are you kidding me? I learned from Kevin. But uh, hey, no. man, you got to move to Panga, bro. Okay, you got <laughs> you got to move. Over. <laughs> yeah. No, he. Uh, I'm I'm stoked for him that he's got them, man. Because that's like his dream. I can't wait to see what he does with them. But uh, but yeah, like that, that's the basic gist is to, is to just have like a, a standard that's being followed, and then you know, hopefully the turtle room has a very very uh, bright and long future ahead where things like that will come into play and there'll be more of a one-on-one, uh, you know, with, with me overseeing certain things, you know, but it's, uh, you know, it's only going to get tougher, you know, that, that's as things grow, but that, that's basically what I do here. Only uh, I, I got, I don't have any help <laughs> except for Casey, you know, so. I, I was going to say it's probably challenging having people in different locations, but I think it also probably has some pros like different environments some people can work with different species in different states and things yeah. of that nature that make it like easier i i, I don't know 
how to put it, but no, I, I, there's definitely benefits to it. You know, it's just, uh, you know, it's, it, we're, we're, we're working with what we have and, and building off that, you know, like I said, we don't have, you know, we've, we've called garden state tortoise, you know, the turtle rooms assurance facility in the past. And that's basically because like some of the projects that we have here, you know, they are, I am the director of animal husbandry. It is, it is, you know, there are several turtle room projects and I'm overseeing them, you know, in the flesh right here. Yeah. So, uh, you know, but yeah, there's definitely, uh, I guess there's, you know, there's pros and cons to everything, you know, and it's hard to, it's hard to write up something and tell somebody what to do, you know, but when it's, if it is designated as a turtle and project to receive funding and whatnot, then yeah, you know, it's, it makes things a little bit easier to kind of put them within a bracket and say, you got to follow this, you know? Yeah. So which is a standard, you know, and I think there should be a quote unquote, some kind of standard, especially when you're dealing with animals, you know, and making sure they're, you know, that's, I mean, I think not enough people are doing that kind of stuff. So there's not maybe, yeah. <laughs> there's really, I would say, I mean, when, if there was a better knowledge base, you know, for people to actually be able to go to and like with open mindedness to be able to look at instead of like, you know, when you go to, you know, a Facebook group and that's the first thing you see and then you go with that and then someone else is like, no, this and then that it's like, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's just, a well, good, that's, yeah, that, that, and that's one of the things that we're definitely trying to do with the turtle room. And, and even what I've tried to do all along is try to draw people away from <laughs> those outlets where, you know, Oh, my man, <laughs> you know, when, when, when you've got, you know, all this chatter going on, all these different opinions, you know, if you go to the turtle rooms website, there are so many different things that you can read and look at. And, and we're, we're, we're always like, you know, even if it's not happening overnight, you know, everybody's heads are always going, you know what I mean? I'll be outside and I'll be doing a million things with feeding this one, collecting those eggs, doing this. Maybe Casey needs me for something. Maybe the dog just ran out the house and bit the FedEx guy. True story. <laughs> But it's it's like, <laughs> but my in my head I'm thinking, oh, you know, some some blah 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 for the turtle room, where this project could be this, and that could be that, you know. So, and I think that's kind of cool is just keep setting the bar higher and higher and higher, and making a higher standard, because that's going to help every single one of us in the end, you know, because it shows like, you know, if we can get everybody to start following certain standards and and keeping animals, you know, the best that we absolutely can be. Um, in the end, who who can who can really have anything negative to say about it? Yeah, and I think you know, Anthony even said you guys have like breeding sheets and all that kind of stuff. I mean, you got you got actually a really big database, and you guys, um, I mean, you're even growing. Thanks, so is it is it just um, turtle room like dot com or like what is where, where can the, people find it's, that? It's the turtle room dot org. Okay. Uh, and there's you know there's maps on there, species profiles. You can read a little yeah. bit about every team member. Uh, all our cool. conservation projects, you know, it's not just the Terrapin conservation project, you know, we've uh, inch initiative. We've got wood turtle surveys going on. We've got the Holmes hinge hingeback project in Africa. Um, and, you know, just kind of having our hands in every little thing that we can. And, and one of the things that I love so much about the turtle room that I've loved since day one is we are not solely focused on one genre of turtles or one area of the world. You know, we, we are, you know, making sure that we're doing something with, with all of them you know, uh, and especially having, having that growing respect and concern for our own American species, which I feel like so many, you know, entities out there forget about, you know, this is America. What about our turtles? Anthony and I have talked about that a hundred times, you know, yeah. and, uh, and that's, you know, going back to like the goals, I would really like to see something happen, you know, with like some of our captive animals that are New Jersey natives, you know, like we've already done some genetic research on the wood turtles we have to try to figure out what river basins that they come from. And we've gotten preliminary reports, but nothing definitive yet. But, you know, I can keep going. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, no, I don't think, I mean, yeah, I don't think there's an, I mean, as far as when you're talking about the native species and stuff, not, there's so many people like keep them, but they don't go in depth and actually really, I mean, there's price, I mean, there's endless amounts of stuff that we don't actually know, you know, their natural, um, you know, uh, habits you know mm -hmm. and just things like that you know i mean you oh, find yeah. one and then you think okay water that's it no but you don't realize you know in just you know three years the amount that we've learned about the northern diamondback terrapin is is disturbing you know it, it's insane just just you know when we start looking for them in early early spring you know uh, obviously nothing's going to really be happening yet but we, we we're trying to document every little thing that we can and, and they, they they never cease to amaze us they really don't you know like what Example. Just, you know, just their, their, their movement throughout the year where we, where we start seeing them in the beginning of the season, the adults, and then where, where we see them last, you know, mm -hmm. before things change, you know, we've got probably another 
six weeks before, you know, um, I mean, you never know down in South Jersey. It's weird here. You know, we could be, you know, we could uh, start hitting nights in like, or days in like the fifties, you know, in, uh, in six weeks, or it could still be 80, you know, we've, yeah. we've, Halloween was like 84 degrees the last four years. So <laughs> no joke, literally. Um, but, you know, just, just all the different things that we learned about them, you know, and, and like, you know, everybody always knew that like, you know, some of the reports suggest that but what diamondback terrapins do when it rains and how they'll drink from the surface and stuff like that. But we're watching them come up out of the water during storms, you know, and all the way, all the way up the road to just find a puddle to, to and they just drink profusely from it, you know, uh, you know, simple stuff like that. Are, and, are like, you seeing them just stick their head out and open their mouth to the raindrops too? Cause that's what I see mine. Do. No, I've never seen that. Uh, at least not in the wild, but, okay. um, and then, you know, and then other things like, you know, people saying, you know, a lot of researchers will say, you know, you will never see anything other than an adult female on the road going to lay her eggs. We found our first juvenile this year and we weren't the only project that found a juvenile crossing the road where the females nest too. this thing. You know, it was, it was a good, like uh, maybe three and a half, almost four inches. I, it definitely wasn't four inches yet. It was a juvenile. I, I, because it was a wild turtle, I wouldn't say what sex it was. You know, it, it yeah. still looked female. You know, in captivity, you'd probably already be able to tell if it was a male or not. But we chipped it, and we're curious to see where that turtle turns up again if it survives. But we weren't the only project in New Jersey that saw a juvenile actually out on land like that, and not just basking on the marsh grass. You know, like mm. this thing was moving <laughs> across the road just like a nesting female would. So, you know, like stuff like that. It's, 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 it's just so cool. You know, si simple yeah. little things like that, that you see, you're like, yeah, cause wow. they say, cause they I'm, say, you know, pretty much juveniles and under you, I mean, they're really not going to find them in much open water. Right. I mean, yeah, I, I was curious, uh, have you guys seen what they do for the winter up there? Well, we know where they go back to okay. and it's, and it's where, we first see them in the spring. So they, they definitely head at least here in this population. I don't know what it's like for Jordan's turtles. I don't know what it, what it's like for, you know, Don up in Cape Cod, you know, um, these turtles are, are, and now we've got three sites now. So we only fully, and I wouldn't even say fully, we only really like are scratching the surface with understanding the, the initial, um, location. Um, and what, what we're seeing is, is that there is absolutely nothing here until nesting season they're just hmm. there's nothing and then all of a sudden when the conditions are right and the females are ready it's it's i'm telling you it's like they're texting each other all right we gotta go and then they all and then you go down the road one day and then right there at the creek boom 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 just heads everywhere and huh. then you know at that point it's go time and it's usually the next morning if not a day or two later depending on the weather and the tide and then um and then they move again to the deeper water you know uh driving distance away to uh to go back to go back to sleep. I it's, think your wife mentioned she's only found how many males have you ever seen? I think your wife mentioned two she's seen. What about you? We see a good amount of males going after the females when they're in the, when they're breeding. Uh, and it's funny, you'll see like two or three going after the same female, but I think over here in our initial the first study site, yeah, I think she's only seen like two. I don't even think I've ever seen one. Wow. You know, I think she saw it with her own eyes, but I never caught it. Mm -hmm. Uh <clears throat> and then, you know, but if, like I said, if you go back up to where they head back for brumation and where we see them first in the spring, the males are all over the place out there and, and they're just, uh, they're relentless, but they never re leave the water. The only time we ever see a male on land is when it's dead. You know, sometimes in the spring we'll see them, uh, washed up. We don't know what did it. Um, and it's, uh, where, where we see them, like where, where they're coming out or where, uh, in the fall and spring, we're not allowed, we're not allowed to be hands on there. It's not an actual study site. So we just kind of observe with our eyes, you know, binoculars and camera. Um, and, uh, you know, sometimes we'll see them washed up there, but we can't touch them. We don't, we don't know what's, what's done it, you know. Now with your studies, do you, do you find with your research, do you find a lot of um, um, injured or just kind of yeah. um, <clears throat> like as far as like the females, especially like ones that um, have had an injury, but healed over, like you see a lot of, um, stuff like that. I'm just curious, you know, cause most turtle, you know, to find a pristine one's pretty probably hard. Especially yeah, man. It, it, it's rare to come across. I mean, <clears throat> not terribly rare, but it's rare to come across a, a pristine terrapins. You know, they're, they're the boat strikes, the, the raccoon attacks, 
um, the road kill, the, not even the road kill, but the road injuries that they, you know, persevere from uh, is unbelievable. I, I don't know if Casey told you when she was on the show, but there was a Terrapin we had, I think it was last season. Uh, and she, after it was done nesting, she went to process it and she flipped it over and you could see its insides. This thing had gotten nailed by a, by a, uh, a boat. It was a boat strike and wow. it didn't hit anything vital, you know, and it, it just took a chunk right out of the plastron. I mean, it just like a lobe right off of it. <clears throat> and it, the skin had started now coming across, but you could see, <clears throat> you could see the organs inside. And this therapist just, oh, I'm going to lay my eggs and I'm going to head back to the water. Like, can you imagine if that was you, you'd be dead. Yeah. Oh, no way. You would have bled out, you know? Is it pretty but, amazing to see the re- You know, we are thinking, <laughs> yeah, and we are thinking, uh, and we're not the first ones to say it, that's for sure, that the, the fact that this species occurs in, you know, salinity probably helps them to heal faster. Yeah, yeah. that's what yeah. I was going to say, it's probably the quicker heal time, even though, and I mean. Infections at bay, you know. Yeah. You know. <clears throat> what have you found to be the, you know, if you do have to rescue or anything like that, I don't know, you know, in those instances, as far as protocol that you take, pretty much dry docking and. All that kind of stuff. I mean, as far as stuff that like can't be released, yeah, we we really never try to intervene. You know, we have we have a special permit that allows us to hold any that can't be uh, released, but we've lucked out where we're not getting saddled with all these terrapins that you know that you know are banged up and whatnot. Yeah. Um, but we did have like for instance two this year. One was brought to us by the zoo, and the other one was from one of our sites, um, and they both had spinal injuries. Um, they they were boat strikes, and the the boat propeller just caught the spine enough to where it didn't kill them and it didn't get infected, but they no longer had mobility in the rear legs. Um, and really at that point after, you know, like the one that came down from the zoo, which is the one that did not make it, um, they had already assessed her and there was no affection. You know, she was good to go. It just couldn't be released again. Uh, and she ended up not making it, but, um, she just, the the back legs were just, you know, you could touch them. She didn't feel it. Nothing, you know, uh, and then the other one is in this, is a similar situation, but not as severe and is still doing well. But uh, you really just, just like you would with the captive ones, you know, the brackish water, make sure they have access to fresh sometimes and yeah. try to make them comfortable. You know, the, the, nothing's going to be like the marsh for them, you know? Yeah. That'd be so cool to see the marsh, you know, with the pictures. I see them all over there. and It's, it's, like, it's beautiful, man. People, it down here. <laughs> people do not associate New Jersey with that kind of beauty, but it, it's really, no. as far as the eye can see, man, miles and miles of just, unbelievable marsh you know but the bugs that's rough hey I'm, I'm surprised you haven't made like a naturalistic pond to try to replicate it but i mean i have i yeah. have and, it, and if I the failed, dude i i did it at my old place before we bought this house we were renting an old farmhouse up north and i built a beautiful terrapin pond there and uh and i and i attempted it down here too uh, and now the Coheal and box turtles are living in that pond because the, 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 the terrapin just hate it. I don't get it. <laughs> I don't understand. And every time people come over, I'm like, yeah, this is where I keep my, my terrapins. And they're like, what's wrong? I'm like, well, you know, and I, and I got to tell them that it just didn't work. It doesn't work, you know. But, you know, no, I don't think any of the ones that I even have, with the exception of like one male, none of them are captive bred. You know, they're all at, at one point, whether they were a confiscation or a rescue, they were wild. So I'm sure that's got to have something to do with it. They just, they're just that one species that uh, I guess you can't really fool unless they're like really confined and, you know, can't get to something else. But yeah. anytime you try with these rescues, they, they, they leave the water. I don't oh. get it. Interesting. But that's just me. I, I'm sure other people are probably like, well, I don't know what his problem is, but that's not happening for me. Yeah. <laughs> well, Oh, no nah, man, it, it's definitely been great, man. We're not gonna hold you up much longer, you know. Ed, you no, have I, to go. Yeah. We we all got families we gotta attend to. For sure. Yeah, my wife's a trooper. Thank you. <laughs> Shout out. Hey, we, we <laughs> definitely have to get you and Casey on a joint episode. Yeah, definitely. Let's do it. Real. Let's, Let's get it. on the don't, schedule. Don't, uh, don't threaten me with a good time. <laughs> hey. Hey, Especially we'll, with your slow season coming up, I mean, yeah, yeah, right. Give me something to do. <laughs> we'll we'll do it this winter, man. When everything slows down for you guys, Got even it. if we have to do a double header in a week or something like that. Well, yeah, well, man, we still got to we still got to do the episode with Jordan Squared, man. The two Jordans. <laughs> oh, <geez>. <laughs> <laughs> See how that goes, Mr. Hanson. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Right. But no, it was a pleasure, Chris, man. I'm glad that, you know, same here, man. Thank you, guys. And, you know, it's always good knocking heads, you know, you know, people that are actually doing, you know, a great benefit and especially giving a platform, you know, to people that actually, you know, 
like like Cody said, he when he reached out to you, you know, he didn't think you would even respond. But now, you know, hopefully that people get to see people for who they are and transparent and open that people. And guess what? Yeah. We're all human. We're all we're human. You know what I'm saying? We might not be able to get to everyone, but at least, you know, people understand that, you know, it's not some facade that people can't, you know, we're untouchable. You know, we're here right. to share knowledge and just reach out. And, you know, worst case scenario, you'll put a video answering some questions, <laughs> which is cool, man. <laughs> cool. Thank you, guys. No, no guys, we appreciate it. Uh, we appreciate you guys for tuning in and watching, asking questions and commenting. Uh, we'll be back yeah. next week with uh, another great episode. I'm excited about that one as well. I'm not going to put any spoilers until we officially get it. Um, <laughs> yeah, man. So the, the person we're having, Ed, is dealing with some of those California wildfire issues. Oh, wow. And power outages and things of that nature. So, oh. you know, just in case it doesn't happen. Uh, I don't want to spoil it, but you know, as of right now, we're a go. So, cool. no, it'll be good, man. That's you know, getting. I don't think we ever really had many people from California. That's cool. That, you know, getting so many people on here is it seeing like how you said you mentioned, um, you know, the environment. It's just so different. You see the different kind of species people work with, stuff like that, especially outside. You know, with Anthony and you and stuff like that. So, and I think we have Kevin on coming on here in a couple weeks, right? So, yeah. yeah. It'll be good, man. So awesome. <laughs> All right, guys. All right. We had another great episode. This has been What the Chill Podcast. Uh, you guys have a good night, and we'll see you next week. Peace out, Peace. everybody.